How you going guys it's Jet Simmer here and I am back in the simulator on the PMDG um, on the 737NGX on FSX. Now today we are going to do as you can see the FMC uh, as it will also be in the, um, the title of this video. So we're going to do the FMC today. The reason I chose the uh, P, uh, PMDG 737 over the X-Plane is the has a little bit more uh, calculations and all that sort of stuff. So either or either, they're both exactly very similar uh, and the Zebo mod to the PMDG uh, aren't very much different. So it's just this one is a little bit more realistic to the fact. So we're going to be starting off with um, this here. Okay, now we are sitting. Uh, why aren't you not tired? That's because I'm not locked into the sim. Alright, so we are sitting at Jacksonville International. Uh, not very good graphics at all. And I believe we do have our new aircraft. I haven't actually looked at the new uh, aircraft that I'll be using for American, uh, uh, American scenery and all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to be using Delta uh, and we're going to be using November 3. 89er Delta Alpha, which will be uh, the yeah, which will be the um, registration for the air, airline that we'll be using. Uh, so yeah, we'll be using Delta Airlines uh, for this, and this is uh, Jackson International, uh, and it's very uh, quiet because I think I have a overwrite file um, for Australian scenery uh, aircraft. So I think I might have to try and get rid of uh, that. Well, there is one aircraft down there. Um, so I could probably bump that up, probably in the uh, the scenery wherever we are. Let's uh, quickly. What did I do that for? Let's go see display. I, yeah, you can see this. Just check the traffic. Yeah, it's very very low. That's why. So yeah, there is only one aircraft here, but that's okay. We're not really worried about it. <clears throat> Today is not the day for anything else apart from the. Uh, we need to have a look around the aircraft, so we're going to go back in the aircraft and have a look at a few different things. Now, we need to set this up so we can do the FMC correctly. I have a tutorial on how to set the aircraft completely up. Now, this is the FMC part on how to pick a destination. So you know your destination, you want to set your legs up. Now, this doesn't have a um, a C uh, a CCAL, a cell cell cal um, thing so we're just not going to worry about that and we'll just use the um, aircraft ident and a, uh, tail identification number November 389 Delta Alpha alright so <clears throat> you can't do any of that without any information now the best uh, way of doing that now this is also going to be a tutorial for uh, the website I'm show you. I've already showed you a good utility website and this is how you do it uh, but today we're actually going to run through this as well um, to help you do the um, stuff <coughs> on uh, the aircraft and how easy it is to install through Simbrief on the aircraft. There is other ones but I prefer to use this one because it's so much easier. Um, maybe the other ones are a lot easier um, but yeah. So first off you're going to have to register your account. Uh, it is free. You can donate it if you wish. Uh, do not use this for real life aircraft. Uh, however, the um, all the different types of uh, uh, what do you call it flight plans that you get from here are almost exactly identical to the real world. So do not use these for real world, um, but they are exactly similar, very similar to identical. Um, I use the Lido version, which is what a lot of European um, airlines use. I'm also trying to learn the Qantas one, but we'll get in that a little bit further. All right, so the first off you want to, uh, if you have only just come in here and you want to um, start using this, first off you're going to want to go to uh, your 
so log in and you want to go to dispatch system um, saved airframes or whatever now first off you want to go and create so we'll go to the dispatch system uh, you want to create a new aircraft first off so you go to my fleet so you go to the dispatch system comes up here <clears throat> you'll see edit view last save and create a new which we will create a new but we need to first do an aircraft there is however um, default if you just want to jump straight in and do it but I like setting it up so you have the proper uh, thing now I kind of need to fix that one up I think that is the one for uh, um, I don't know which one that is that should be the triple seven yeah triple seven with wing length, so I need to fix that up um, to get the little dash in there so here we've got all the other ones that I have so uh, this one here would be x-plane and this one here is my Qantas uh, 737 PMTG for um, uh, what do you call it? Yeah, for FSX for my Australian flights and all that sort of stuff. But we want to do up another one just for Delta Airlines. So we can click on new airframe, and we know that the aircraft that we are using is a Boeing 737 with winglets, uh, and it is an 800. So we looked at that. Uh, there is nothing with uh, winglets, so we're just looking for the Boeing 737-800. We go and proceed. <coughs> now it brings up everything that is on the aircraft now we know that is all that on the aircraft so it was uh, November I think it was November uh, what are we got? November th uh, 389er Delta Alpha so uh, November 389er um, Delta Alpha I believe let's just double check that <coughs> yes it is alright so after that uh, you can do your flight number or whatever you uh, a fin number, you can, whatever the fin number is. So if you want to, uh, some aircraft may have a fin number. Um, the fin number is up here. So you can see that 389, on, which is the fin number um, at the top there on the top of the <coughs> the fin 389. Some of them will actually have the last letters or something like uh, the fin number on most um, Qantas aircraft. So there, there's a, th a fin number on the the wheel wheel well just over there 389 um, but Qantas aircraft will have the last three letters because we don't have numbers in our fin numbers uh, on our registration so 389 is the fin number for that so we can go 389 and then uh, the CCAL code we don't have that on the aircraft but some aircraft do so you can just make up one uh, whatever you want so we're gonna Delta Air um, November Hotel, Delta Air November Hotel. That's our CCAL code. Every aircraft will have their um, own identification uh, for that. Uh, and then, yeah, that's basically unless you've got other other things that you want there. So this one's Delta, um, Delta uh, Airlines, Delta Airlines. So you just know which one, uh, which one's which, and then we can go ahead and save the aircraft. Now the aircraft is saved. We want to go and create a new flight. Um, so to find out, like you're gonna, you're gonna have know what flight you want. Now um, I've already picked um, a flight destination that I'm going to be doing uh, for the live stream in a little bit, um, and it is from Jacksonville, right where we are, that little arrow, because this is a moving map as well. So that's Jacksonville, right where we are, and we're gonna go. So we're gonna close that, uh, and we're gonna go up to Salt Lake City. So it's not a big big flight but it's it's close enough um, for the stream now so you're gonna have squares like that and it does take time to load up but that's okay uh, could not connect a simulator make sure you're broadcasting data or simulator computers um, yeah it's okay that's all right I don't use this as a moving map anyways so it does have all the different waypoints um, so you've got different things here and also it has along here all the different um, departures and what runways and how many feet they are but that's okay so we got our two so we're going to go from KJX um, KJX so uh, Jackson International all the way out to um, Salt Lake City up at um, KSLC so KJX uh, so we're going to go airline uh, first off we're going to pick our frame so we're going to pick our Delta frame uh, that we just did which is that one and if we do that, it will just filter out everything. So uh, our airline today, uh, I don't know, Delta Delta Airlines, 
um, is our code. I will have to find out the correct code for the airline. Uh, so today's flight number will be 4563. Uh, four, three. We're going to be departing KJAX, like we said. And we're going to be heading to Salt Lake City, which is what's KLSC. Um, S, I think that was it. Yep, okay, so state, United States of America, and that's where we are. I don't think that was it, was it? K, K, S, L, C. Let's have a look at the, uh, yeah. Yeah, so we're going up from there to there, which is pretty much over near California. I think that's in Nevada uh, area there, so it's not, it's quite a largest flight, but not a, not a large flight at the same time. Uh, we can find out how far exactly, four hours. Um, 45 minutes en route. If you want to change it, you can. Um, so that's not a big deal. Um, that's a scheduled route time. It's given a departure runway of uh, 26 and a arrival runway of 3, uh, three 4 right. Um, the extra fuel that we can take on board and what passengers and cargo that you want to take. Um, obviously, your call sign is going to be pulled out from up there. Your fuel factor, if you know it, which I leave it at point, uh, P00. Uh, that's your cell code that you would have uh, either made up or had it already on the aircraft. Your FIN number and your registration. Obviously, your cruising uh, profile uh, is already there because that is what you have um, done when you did the aircraft itself. Now, if I wanted to actually do a smaller, um, a smaller one, let's see if we can find a smaller, a smaller run. So that's uh, Salt Lake City, um, K. Uh, K A T L. So we can go here. So it was a K A T L. Um, so that search that one, please. So K A T L, and that is just up there. So we could actually do this one here, which is a, just a hop, skip, and a jump up that way. So we'll do. Let's um put K A T L in the thing up here. So where is it? Uh, K A T L. All right, so there we go. One hour, twenty minutes on route. So that's that's the flight we're going to do on the stream, actually. Uh, departing runway twenty six and our landing arrival runway will be twenty seven right. Uh, so our taxi out and our taxi in. So you want to have a taxi out around ten minutes, um, depending on the uh, type of airfield it is. Now it's quite um, our taxi out. Well, yeah, we'll leave it at ten minutes. We're going to take today uh, two ton of fuel. I always take about two extra ton of fuel um, just for the sake of it. Uh, our altitude is going to be on auto, um, so we're going to choose. You can choose whatever altitude flight level you want, really. Um, so we'll we'll, uh, we'll leave that on auto. You can actually have whatever you want. Actually, bugger it. Let's go um, 280. Um, so flight level 280. Flight level 280. Um, we're going to have the passengers on auto, and we'll leave the calm. Uh yeah, we'll leave the we'll leave the cargo off today. We're not going to take any cargo, so we'll leave passengers on auto, and uh, the zero fuel weight will be on auto as well. And then you'll have your dispatcher remarks, and you can choose a whole bunch of different um ones to do. So all we'll do is we'll pick some really random ones. Okay, so we'll pick the you can have a look at them how they how they work. Um, so K O T L. So you can have a look at which ones they are down there. So you can have a look at that one. There's one there, yeah, that one, um, this one here. We got a smaller one, like more of a direct route. So we'll just pick number two, just for the sake of it. Um, you can also go route finder, so uh, three two zero. So we're gonna um, want to pick a what are we two eighty today? We're gonna do a flight level of two eighty. Want to find a route. <coughs> All right, so we found a route, and we'll just be flying the same one again, by the looks of it. Okay, so uh, find SIDS and STARS. Done. All right, so we've down the, uh, found a void airways SIDS and STARS. So you can actually put there which ones you want to avoid or which ones you yeah, analyze route. So route is analyzed. Alternate airports, you can have up to as many alternate airports as you want by doing that, and you can just go find. Find. Um, you don't really need a lot of terminal airports. Um, you want to have different terminal airports just in case. All right, so you got a whole bunch of different terminal airports there. So there's one, two, three, four. There's dud back this way, so they're all up this way. So if you were gonna crash, you'd just land here instead of going out that ways. 
or whatever. Like that journal level is like way up there. But yeah, you can have them, so you know what they are. ETOP scenario, so you can come here and you can have a look at all the d different ETOPs, or you can auto calculate, and it will normally tell you that there's not required for this route. ETOPs are for like long, long routes. This is only an hour and twenty minutes. So, but that is basically everything that we need to do uh, for the flight. Now, this is a Zulu time, so you can change the Zulu time uh, whenever. So it's normally thirty minutes prior to taking off. Um, we're probably going to be a bit late doing it. Now these are the uh, OFP layout, so your um, operational uh, flight plan. Um, you can choose which one they are. Um, so Lido, uh, a lot of people use Lido. Australia use um, Qantas Flight Australia. Um, if you can find out what Delta Airlines use, I think that's Delta Airlines there. <laughs> um, they have a different one. But we're just going to use Lido because it is really easy. You can choose uh, pounds or kilos. I always use kilos. You can use the um, count the fuel, reserve fuel. Uh, you can do it whatever you wish. I always keep it on auto on everything. Detailed navlog, ETOPS planning, plan, steep climb, uh, step climbs, runway analysis, and uh, not, uh, not not arms. So that is um, uh, something to do with the takeoff. I'm going to have to learn that again. Um, it's been a while, uh, and your detailed flight maps are detailed, simple, or none. I keep it on detailed, and you can save that default so it saves it for everybody else. Now, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and save the flight. So, you want to save that flight so you can go back into my flights and check it out later, and then you want to go generate, uh, which will overwrite your last flight. Uh, so, you want to generate that now to actually use um, these. Excuse me. Actually, use these and start learning how to read these. So, what do you want to do? Once you've done that, you can go to that. You can also uh, go to download. So, if you download to FMS, you can download it straight into the uh, different. Um, so, X Plane 11, all that sort of stuff. If you really want to get it straight into an aircraft ready to go, FSX, uh, Prepared 3D, FS Commander. Um, there's also PMG Wing Up Link and Flight Plan, blah, blah, blah. Um, you can also go, oh, there's Active Sky somewhere. No, there's not. Sky Vector, all that sort of shit. Um, so if you really want to have a look at all of that sort of stuff, um, you can. Or you can just go ahead and hit the download button here. Um, you can pre-file a flight into an online network. So if you're using VATSIM or anything like that. Um, there's another great tool that you can use. Uh, which I'll show you in a sec. So we've done our, um, you can also hit the PDF view if you don't want to actually put it into the aircraft and you want to have a look at it. Now you can actually see this particular thing uh, by saving it. So if you save that, if you're using X-Plane, you can put it into the tablet for the PMDG, or the, for the Zebo mod, you can put in the tablet for that. So, so this is the uh, flight plan that you will get. You can print it out uh, if you wish. Uh, I don't need to print it out um, because most of the things are going to be there. And it will tell you how much fuel you've got uh, that you can take. So this is 8 tonne, uh, so 8,674 kilos, I believe, because that's what, what I put it on. It's not in pounds, it's in kilos. Uh, it will tell you um, your uh, call sign. It will tell you where you are at Jacksonfield uh, International, Jackson Atlanta 1. Um, it'll tell you what aircraft you're using, where you're going, uh, jacks uh, to ATL, um, like the maximum estimated um, a ATC, and all that sort of stuff. It'll tell you everything here. A few things that I'm still trying to learn there. Um, plan fuel. Um, so you want to learn all your fuel there. So 8,674. So you want to keep that there. You also want to go down here and you want to check out your uh, estimated cargo. So packs cargo how much you're taking your payload is 17.9 your zero fuel weight is 59.6 um, and your fuel is 8.7 ton and that was with the post extra of two ton which you should see up here extra two ton there it is um, which gives us a minimum of 39 minutes um, extra fuel uh, and then you got your toe and all that sort of stuff. So you're going to be using that a hell of a lot. Now you can have a look at this and you can implement all of these uh, into the FMC uh, manually. So you'll have your airport, you'll have your takeoff waypoint, second waypoint, top of cruise waypoint. So that's where you're going to be at the top cruise. Then your waypoints all the way out there. TOD is top of descent. And then obviously going down into your stars there. So the um, the star is DCT, um, and your SID here is um, 
are on E2, on on E2, and so Alpha Romeo N, uh, November Echo Y uh, Yankee or two. Uh, so that is your SID, and that is your waypoint. So that is your SID, and that is your waypoint, and that is your SID, and that is uh, top of cruise SID and waypoint. It's also can be classed as a airway as well. Now I don't think we're going to be jumping into an airway because as soon as we get to here, um, as you can see, we've got one two uh, and three four and then we jump down straight into the so we're not going to be going onto an airway today it's just pretty much jump up go a couple of distances and then jump straight back down and you can see how your distances wherever your distances are as well so there'll be distances in here somewhere um, uh, so yeah you don't have to do that if you don't wish down further you have all your alternate airports um, that you can put into your alternate airports I don't use those uh, unless I really need them um, it's only a small one if I was having a big one you, you'd do that alright so first off you want to go and set up the aircraft with that alright so we're, what we're gonna do is go back to FSX and we're gonna go and have a look at the <coughs> FMC. So this is where you want to go here. All right. So we got to go and set up our payload first. So uh, first class, coach class, um, whatever. Okay. So we do know by looking at the packs is 172. All right. 172. Now we got 150. So that is 162 there. Alright, so really, we kind of can't have 172. Now, what you could do, what you really could do if you really wanted to, uh, this aircraft, we're going to change it up. Um, we're going to go back to here, PMDG setup, go aircraft, um, equipment. You can go through and find the. Um, there's like a, you can change it, so you're not doing, uh, no, so it's not that one. Displays, failures, <coughs> type. <coughs> there was a way of doing it, I just can't remember where it was. Um... You can get rid of it so it's not uh, all, you know what I mean? It's, you don't have the first class there, and you can just have economy all together, just the whole thing. I probably won't pass it by now. There you go. All right, two classes, single class. There it is. I did find it eventually. <coughs> All right, so we go back to main menu. <coughs> go to payload. Now you can see that we've got a bigger aircraft. So it was 172. We put that in there. All right, so we got 172 on board. Go back and have a look at the uh, thing again. So our payload is 17.9. So we want to get the payload down to 17.9. We want our zero fuel weight down at. Uh, 59.6 and the 8.7 ton of fuel. Alright, so what we can do here is obviously we've got no cargo. We're not taking any cargo. <coughs> so, no cargo today. Uh, we're going to return there and go to fuel. Now, uh, we do know um, that our fuel is a lot different. Now, we can't just go ahead and put in our pointage uh, through so we, we know our fuel is 8.7 ton but we know up here um, that it was 8,674 tons so you can put the exact amount in there if you really really want but uh, we're gonna go ahead and just chuck a little bit extra up in here so it is 8.7 just like it said boom we just chuck that in there and it will put all the tank total in the aircraft 18.9% don't be threatened uh, at this uh, type of Oh god, don't be threatened, I'll just use the thing, 
So you're gonna have a look over here. You're gonna be like, oh god, I've only got 8.7 ton, which is exactly what the aircraft asked for. Now most airlines will be like, excuse me, we're gonna try and save on fuel. Um, you're gonna take this much fuel. So we go back to our payload, and if we have a look at our zero fuel weight, it is quite high still, um, because I think it is in pounds, not kilos. Um, so that is not a big deal. Uh, we can actually go out and fix that up by just going to uh, here, going to options, performance simulation. Um, maybe an aircraft displays. Uh, you'd have to have a, have a play around to get your proper one. Now this is a new aircraft, I haven't completely gone through it and quite checked it out. Ah, so yeah, here, weight in units or pounds. So I change it back to kilos, uh, fuel low at 900 kilos. Um, so yeah, I keep the weight uh, on kilos there. So yeah, you do find it eventually. Um, and brakes temp indicated, yeah, okay, cool. So if we go back to our fuel now, uh, it should all be set up. Um, so we've got our fuel. Uh, we need to change that to kilos now, don't we? Um, uh, so we need to go down and go uh, 8... Whoop! 8.7. Ooh, not 8.7, 8. 700. Put that there. Alright, so now we've got enough fuel. Okay, if we go back to payload, we have our payload there of 55.1, okay? Now, our payload for this actual uh, trip was what? Um, so we can go back here and have a look at our payload, 59.6. Um, our, our zero fuel weight, sorry, so our payload was 17.9, my bad. Um, so if you really wanted to get it up to the level that it was at, you could go ahead and just add a bit of, uh, like, baggage for the aircraft. Um, if you really wanted to, and just keep adding until uh, it was it was roughly close. So um, if you really want to try and get it close, like we had, I think it was uh, 50, um, 59 point something. Uh, we can go. Uh, so what was it? 59.6, so we're going to go 2, 5, chuck that there. 59.6, so we can go 1, 9, 5, 6. So we do got to get it up there. Alright, so now we have our 59.6, which is exactly right. We've got 172 passengers, um, and we have our fuel by going back and checking our fuel there, which is correct. Uh, we can also check to see if the fuel is in there. So we do have some in the middle there. Alright, so basically we've done the fuel now. Uh, and we get to our FMC. Now, to do the position international, so we need to know where we are. So this is the last position. You do not want to use this, otherwise it will not work. Uh, so we want to know our reference airport. Now, you can do one of two ways. You can go ahead and type away in here, or you can type away here. Um, that's more realistic there. Uh, when you first come to the page, you're going to come to something like uh, POS. Uh, not that. No. Index. I don't. You're going to come to something like this. <laughs> Alright, so you need to know that it's, uh, we're at a 737 800 with winglets. Uh, our engine rating is 26k and our arc, uh, our arc cycle is 1901, which is January the 3rd to January the 3rd of 2019. So that is active, that is current, that is good. And then you have your um, OP program which is up to date as well. There is nothing down here. If it is out of date, it will let you know. Good, good, good. Nothing else on that page. Then we go to our position. Uh, so we're at uh, KJAX, so um, Jackson International. We put that in there. Good to go. Um, so we're really good. All right, so if there's a box down here, all right, um, which it, it won't be down there because we're actually aligned uh, with the aircraft at the moment. So if I wanted to um, want to go up and have a look. So our alignments are still where are they? Uh, so there, 
right there where the yeah that those two things are still aligned which is good um, and we can tell that we're aligned because our instruments are working um, so yeah Oh, we don't want that bit of a graphic issue there. I actually have the uh, speed brake out so I can... Because if you put the speed brake in, it's in our way. So, got it away. Alright, so we're at gate. Uh, I believe I was at gate 24. Uh, so, golf 24. We put that in there. Not in database. Um, that's okay. So, could we just use 24? It may pop in there. It's still not in database. Um, I don't know why it's not working. Uh, it is golf 24. Um, don't know why it's not working. All right, so it's not going to work. It's not going to let us. But we're at golf 24 at gate. Now, if the if it's just lines like that, it's not a problem. Okay, it's not going to be a big, big, big issue. And if you have boxes down here, you can do one of two things. When you put the gate in, it will tell you what uh, the gate position is. If you can't get the gate in, you go here uh, and you look for the left GPS or the right GPS. If you use those two things by just clicking, it'll put it down in the bottom here. Uh, and then there'll be a box here and you just go boom, click, bum, done. Okay? So that's how you can get your uh, waypoints in properly. Okay? Now you can go to your route. Okay? Automatically it'll put KJX there. And then we can do our destination. Uh, so that was K-A-T-L, I believe. Let's have a look again. Uh, by looking up at this KATL. Yep. Okay, so we can go back here and put that in there. Now, our flight number uh, we knew by having a look at this was Delta 4573. That's the number that we made up. Now, if you have a procedurally generated one that it will pop up using uh, either FS Passenger or another thing or something on FSX, you could put a different flight number there. So that was uh, just double check that. It was 4573, 4573, go ahead and put you in there. Now the runway, we do know that there was a runway that we're going to leave today. Um, now I believe that runway was a 26. Uh, if you can't find now, I don't even know if it was on here at all. Um, that could be uh, further down here, so um, not really telling me at all. I think it was uh, Romeo 26 and uh, something else. So I'm going to have to look at this myself because I'm not really. I just use this as a basic instrument to get me going. Um, so <coughs> I believe it was Romeo 26. Now, if you really wanted to know what the runway was, uh, if you have. Um, I have, unfortunately. I don't have it on today. Probably should turn it on. Let's turn it on. Um, I, I use uh, Active Sky next. Um, so, Active Sky Next is the weather engine for real live weather. For, uh, <coughs> for the aircraft, well, for the FSX, there is one for a wreck plane coming out, which is really, really cool. Um, so, I can go, is it KJAX? Uh, just have a look at KJAX. So, Jacksonville International. Uh, it is at 3205, so we will be leaving on runway 26 because of the heading of the wind. Okay, um, the co-route. Now, these co-routes here, you can find a saved co-route. Now, I've got two saved co-routes there. Now, to get this in here, instead of me having to do everything individually, I can go to the... Um, so, if I wanted to go here again, uh, go to wherever my settings are, I can go to the SimBrief downloader. You can download straight off SimBrief. What it will do is it will bring up a brief pad here. Now this will download this file, uh, this this flight into everything that you have downloaded, uh, that you have it ticked to do. So I'm not going to get it to update me just yet because it will take a while. But it will have everything here that I have got it ticked on if I want it to go in there. So all I need to do is have a look. Okay, Delta Airlines 5 uh, 4573, that is the one that we're doing from KJX to KA uh, TL, I can't remember what that, that one is, something about Jacksonville. Um, so that's where we're going. So that is the correct one. So we're going to export that. So once that's exported, it's gone to the areas that I have chosen. And we can go ahead and close that and close that. And it will give you a little uh, ping if you are using Windows 10. So 
So we can go ahead and get rid of that. And go back into co-root, and what do you know? There it is. There is two there ready to go. Um, so we can just pick one. Just go ahead, execute that, and it will give us our thing. Okay, so um, run my 2-6 again. Uh, and we go out, and you can see that we have already the um, things that we're doing. So that they're all the different ones. So there you go, to departure. So KJX departure. Run my 2-6, select. And we are on the uh, Alpha Romeo November Echo Yankee 2, because that's what was in it. We are not doing the transition today, but you can do that because we are doing that transition, which was on our legs uh, before. So you can go ahead and collect roots, and you'll see that there. Um, so that is our first one, and then we move on to our next ones out there. Okay. <clears throat> now to find out if we are going in the right direction, you can see that by going to plan, like that, uh, zoom out just a tad, we'll go out to 40, and then you can go down to legs here, and you can go step by step, so if I just zoom out just a tad, we can go step by step, starting with, um, uh, let's go, starting with that. So our first step, okay, the heading that we're going to be leaving on the runway, and then our vector straight out. Uh, we don't have a vector if we don't want it. Um, so we can go ahead and cancel that off straight away. So we can go uh, next page, back page. So then we got that. Uh, you can have the vector straight out if you want. Uh, from there you're going um, out to there, out to um, our SID, and off to the rest of the flight, out to Huxley. Now Huxley is going to be our last point of call before we head into our departure. Now our departure, uh, departure, descent. Uh, our descent, we're going into the airfield here, KTL. So if I wanted to find out the destination uh, on that, I could go ahead and bring up Active Sky Next, or you would wait until you get there. So this is Active Sky Next. So um, I'll go ahead and put ATL right there, and it will tell me that this is Hartsfield Atlanta International. And we can find out the temperature and our wind, so it is going to be uh, 310 at 15 knots. Uh, it is going to be daylight and all that sort of stuff. So you can use that, and that's how I find out the, the weather. Okay, so we know that, so we're going to be landing on... <coughs> uh, so it's got a couple of different runways there, but we're not landing on any of those ones because it's out of the wind. <coughs> so we can land on uh, runway 26 right or runway 26 left. I'm pretty sure they had a 2-8, didn't they? Uh, so, basically, we, we can land on wherever. Uh, wherever it's going to tell us. Now, I think it was 27 right. Um, so we 27... Uh, or was it 2-6 right? Uh, we want to find the... The best point of call. We want uh, ILS approach. Uh, so we got the 2 here. Uh, the best way to find out which one we're actually landing on is just to go back to here and go to our um, Husky. Uh, we can go there. And, okay, so Husky's there. Uh, we can go back to our flight. Um, we can hit on my 2-7. Yeah, have a look through the uh, stars. Um, now Husky's not on the stars there at all. Okay, so that's wrong. We're not going there at all. So we go back and we go to six, uh, two six right. Uh, can we find that? No, we can't. So that's not there either. So we need to find another one. Did tell us what um, runway we may be landing on. Now to find that out, you can just go back here and edit flight. Well, um, it's not going to stuff up anything in the aircraft. It'll tell us. Uh, okay, so two seven right was the arrival runway. Uh, so we can go back and find our two seven right arrival runway. Um, so whatever, we'll just see if we can find it. Um, 
So you can pick up acid. Uh, normally you'd hold here and I'll, they'll give you one. But we'll just go ahead and uh, pick up a SID. Now if you don't know the, the, the SIDs, so we're at Husky. If you don't know the SIDs, there's another way you can find out. Uh, we can bring up this and we can go to um, our airport. Now we got KAT here and I will find, uh, so that's, a, that's leaving. Uh, so we're going to find a star, okay? So you can click on these and you can find the stars uh, that you want. Um, so we need to find Husky or wherever it is. So you go through and you find where you are in the in the where you're coming in from, um, and what the runways are. <clears throat> so these are all the different ones here, and then they come into the holding it the holding pattern, <clears throat> which is there. Um, so we need to find the one that we're going to be on. Um, so our last last one. Hobbit. Oops, God. Um, yeah, all right. So that's not it. So I go legs. I go husky. All right. So we got husky there. Uh, that's husky. Uh, so yeah, we've got to go through and find out where husky is. Um, so we just keep going through, and you will eventually find it. It'll pop up. Go away. I don't know what that is. I hope that didn't cancel out a lot of things. Uh, so I have probably gone past it. This one has quite a few. So that's probably northbound there. A lot of those would be northbound. Um, Husky. Okay, so there's Husky there. Um, so would it be that one there? Uh, so if that's Husky, Husky's got to be out here somewhere then. So they're, they're all north ones. So it's got to be these ones out here. All right. So let's go back to the aircraft, and we can go find uh, the arrival that we're going to be landing on. So it was two seven, uh, two seven right ILS. Um, so click on that, and we can find. So we got one here. Um, that we can land on. Uh, there we go. Sin Sinca 6A. I believe that's that one there that we're looking at just there. There we go. So that is the one that we'll be coming in on and that is also a holding uh, area. So what we'll do is we'll go back here, grab that one, um, and then we can have, if we think, uh, no, we don't need any of those. We can go here if we really want to. Uh, we can transition off to that one there. Add that to route. We go to fix here. Um, we can go step, 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 all the way out, and it will stop at Husky. Um, okay. So once it stops at Husky, then we're moving on to um, step, step, step. Move on to there. Um, we can go and go up here and quickly have a look. See. If you really want to zoom all the way out and have a look. So there, uh, we can move further in. One, two, Husky there. Now, this one is ALT, so that is the actual airport. Now, you don't want that one. Otherwise, you're going to be flying over the airport. Okay? So here is you. Okay? So you want to grab that one. Uh, you want to first check to see what all the different ones are doing. Okay? So what you want to do is you want to go back out to there, grab that one, and come back out here. Oop, it's a previous page. And you want to find that one there. Um, then you want to go step, step, and then here. You want to put it there, lock in. So that way you're not going to the airport. And then you want to go step out to you, 
that is going to be our hold area out there so you want to go um, our legs um, we'll fix up the hold in a minute so you want to go step 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 hold and then come into the airfield uh, which is all good to go now we can take that off plan boom so we know that there's our plan we can go to hold uh, before we do that actually we need to find out the hold uh, we want to lock that in and grab that and put that in there okay you don't want to do that so we're going to grab that and we're going to put that up over the top there and then that into there there we go all right so that should be right there now I just go back to plan. I actually had it doubled up there for a bit. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There we go. So we're all good to get going. We're all good. Take that off plan now. And we go back to uh, here, grab you, and then we go out to hold. Um, now you wanna create a next hold. So you wanna activate that. Go ahead and activate it. Go to the next hold. Uh, when you get up here, you can put the hold straight into the uh, next hold there. Boom, done. Hold at U, yes. Uh, so now, if we go to our plan, plan, legs, step, and you just move out through the different holds. Um, hold at U, yes please. It should be there, next hold. Um, so you come here, plonk it in there, execute. Um, and then we go, if we go through the steps, there's our hold. Okay, so that's the hold, um, and there it is. And then all you have to do to exit the hold, when you're flying, you can just go exit hold and it will uh, start taking you down to the airfield. So that is your route done. Um, you can also go here and you can fix your uh, radiuses and stuff like that. Um, so if you wanted to do like five nautical miles out from the airport and all that sort of stuff. So um, for example, um, KATL, put that in there and it will give you a radius. Um, now the reciprocal of uh, 270, whatever the uh, reciprocal is. So what we'll just do is we'll just do 270. Uh, for the sake of it, I'm going to put that in there um, and uh, zero 05. So 5 nautical miles out, uh, 270 at uh, 10 nautical miles out, and uh, 270 at 15 nautical miles. And what happens is you'll see like the little circle, and I will tell you your 15 nautical mile line. Um, if we zoom out, you can see all five of them. So it's 15, 10 and five nautical miles from the landing airstrip. Um, so you can do that, that's pretty neat. Uh, and it will help you. And you can also do the beam as well, which will give you a Euro beam. All right, so once you have done uh, your legs and all that sort of stuff, it is a lengthy process to get that set up um, and get it all correct and ready to go. Uh, we can go ahead and uh, once it's activated, uh, it will be a solid line instead of a dotted blue line. All right, so now we can go to the perf page. Uh, now, the really good thing about this aircraft is it will automatically put in um, the thing, uh, the E08. Otherwise, you'll have to do that yourself. All right, so we do know that we're taking an extra two ton uh, in reserve. So, reserve. Cost index today on these 737s, so we're going to use six. Uh, and then the plan fuel, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. You've got to do these ones at the boxes, though. All right, so we know we're going to be doing a flight level of 280. You can put FL in front of it if you wish. Now, we want to find out the uh, the wind. Now, this is also um, from Active Sky Next, so we're in Jacksonville. So you can do the Jackson, uh, you can use Active Sky um, here, this little window, and you can see the wind there. So two eight uh, at ten, um, or you can go ahead and use the weather request up the top here, uh, which will give you the weather report as well. Also, give the altimeter uh, two eight at ten. Um, so you can use that as well. So we're going to go 28 at 10 and 
put the crosswind in. Now, we need to find out the ISA deviation. Now, so ISA dev uh, is the difference between what you're going to be at altitude, so at top cruise, TC, top cruise, um, altitude outside. Now, it is at default at 40 Fahrenheit, 40. So that is wrong. 40 and 40 is so wrong, uh, especially with Fahrenheit being higher than Celsius when it's um, off and it's zero, zero on there. Now, what we need to do at top cruise uh, is we need to find out what we're going to be flying at today. So we're going to be close to the 30, um, the flight level 300, and we know that it is minus 44.10 up there. So that is now going to change what we put in our ISA dev. Now, it is up there for myself because I have it set for Celsius, not Fahrenheit. If you have it set for Fahrenheit, you need to check the Fahrenheit one. Now, for myself, I know it's 44 minus 10 up there so it's probably going to be a deviation of um, minus one um, so minus one there so no it's going to be even colder so let's just go minus five and have a look or minus four minus four there we go all right minus four and you can if you really 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 wanted to uh, we know that it's minus uh, thing so we get minus 3.1 i don't believe that is actually going to go in there no it's not it's going to want the rounded off so it is a nicer dev of minus four which is 44 degrees minus 44 degrees uh, outside today up at that top of the top of the cruise today now the trans altitude level is the altitude of the airport now to find that out the trans altitude of the airport we're going to be going to uh, the Kajax airport here on the um, SID that we're going to be leaving on uh, and we're leaving on this one now, this should tell us what our trans altitude is. Otherwise, we can also find out another way on finding the trans altitude. So, uh, failed the altitude median after departure. Clearance filed altitude with 10 minutes. Um, so, top altitude uh, around the airfield. And I don't think it's going to show us the trans... Ah, it's trans altitude. There it is. So trans altitude is 1800 here at this airport. So the trans altitude uh, and trans altitude, yeah, flight, eight, flight level 180. In uh, Australia, or some airports are like 110, flight level 110, or flight, zero, uh, flight level 100. So very low for the trans out, uh, level. Uh, wrong one. So the trans level is correct. So we can go ahead and execute that. Now, you don't have to worry about this uh, until the first office comes back from doing its uh, runarounds, but that's okay. We know it is 8 degrees, but we're going to put in outside, say, 15, um, and that is cool. So now we can have our, we can go check which flight that we want. Now, I don't want to take off with 26. I don't want to take off with 27. I don't want to take off 24. I want to go out at a nice 22k departure. I always try to do that. Um, just so I save a bit of fuel on a flight. So we're going to put it down as 15 degrees today and it will tell us that we're going to be going out of climb one um, using <coughs> very little N1 on, on that. Now, then we can go ahead and go to the takeoffs. Now, you don't want to do this part first. You want to go to here and do your slope and your wind. Now, FSX doesn't have slope, so you don't need to worry about that. So we know it is 280 at 10. Uh, there we go, so 280 at 10. Uh, it is dry, wet, or whatever it is, so you can choose whatever you want there. <coughs> Outside temp, we know is uh, 7 degrees, or 8 degrees. Um, so we can go ahead and go back. Flats today, we're going to be using flats on 5. Um, and we know that it's going to be working, so we're going up. It's pretty cool. And uh, we can go ahead and automatically calculate that, which is uh, going to be there, uh, just by clicking on that. Our runway is 26 and our feet of the runway, which we can find out um, by going in here. We can uh, find out the uh, feet of the runway. Um, so if you really want to know it quickly, uh, you can go to jacks like that and scroll down and find out what runway 26 left or 26 right was. So runway 26 left, uh, I believe, we're le uh, was that Jacksonville? Yeah, runway 26 left, I believe, or was it right that we were leaving on? Uh, runway 26, well, I know. Uh, right or left. So one of them was 9,000, the other one was something. So we're just going to put in, um, let's just put in 10,000. So, yeah, boom. Uh, so that is our, um, it's 10,000. 
Uh, or if you really, really wanted to, you could just go uh, 9, 9, and bonk that in there. <coughs> With a little bit extra remaining. Go ahead and put in your VR uh, Q, QRHs, so your speeds, v -nav, uh, V1, VR, and V2. Go ahead and turn it on, and that will put it up here. Um, so you can see the little green lights there, which is really good. And then from there, you can go to your climb. Make sure that your climb is good, make sure your cruise is good, and your descent is good. And you have activated it, and it is all ready to go. Um, so yeah, basically that is, in a nutshell, how to do the FMC. From there, you go ahead and do it in your MCPs, and uh, you put all your altitudes and stuff in there as well. And also go up here and put in your altitude, um, whatever you're going to be flying up there for the aircraft. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and do that. This stream is, or this video has already been long enough by going through the FMC, going through um, Simbrief, and how to do the ISADEV and all that sort of stuff. The rest of the uh, setting up of the FMC is up in the air. Now, most of the time, I'll be doing that anyways in streams, so you will not have to see a tutorial on that, but if you really wish to see a tutorial on it, let me know and I will get you a tutorial out there for that. Um, but apart from that, we're all really good to go. Um, and you can have a look at there. So takeoff, uh, that is the takeoff speed that you'll be doing, 148 V2. Um, and your approach when you get there. So you'll be at flaps uh, 151 knots at flap 30. When landing, you don't need to do flaps 40 unless you're doing um, cat threes or really short landing. So 30, it's more than enough. You're not going to do that straight away because your gross weight is not going to be 68.4 when you land. It's going to probably be 62 point something, depending on how long you're flying for and all that sort of stuff. So that is another thing that I can teach while I'm doing the tutorial as well, uh, while I'm doing full flight tutorials. So, cool. That is everything there, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much um, for the uh, for watching, and I will see you on the stream very, very shortly. I'm actually going to go fly this one right now. Um, because the aircraft is on and it's ready to go. So I'll see you for a stream very, very, very shortly. Um, so thanks, guys. Catches in a second. And, yeah, let's do this soon.